There were so many great stories about Brian Clough in his time as a legendary football manager. It's time for four more. First up, Mark Crossley on how secure he felt as Forest keeper under Brian Clough and how he signed a blank contract for the master manager. When I came back from Manchester United and he put me back in the team, I knew it was a matter of time before I became... Because I signed a new contract when I come back from Manchester United as well. Right. Um, a four-year contract, which was a blank contract, by the way. <laughs> he made me sign a blank contract. Um, but when you've played in the first team, that's when contract... This is how loyal he was. He just ripped the contract up. We're going to give you a new one. Would you like a new one? Of course I'd like a new one, yeah. Uh, I remember being in his office and he put the contract on the table and he said, sign that, son. And I said, I can't sign it, Gaffer. He said, why? I said, it's blank. There's nothing on it. You know, and I, there's no agents then. or no. no, I couldn't ring an agent and say, it was, sign it. He actually said to me, sign it or piss off and play for Barnsley. Right. And Barnsley were in the third division at the time, it all looks my hometown club, and I wanted to be at Nottingham Forest playing for Brian Club. He said, I'll tell you what, son. He says, You've got five minutes. Out the office, he said. So I walked out of his office and I'm stood in the corridor. And he's shouting, Four minutes! <laughs> Four minutes! You've got three minutes, son. <laughs> So you end up walking back in and I signed the blank contract. Did Thank it turn you out for a green? Sorry, yeah. did it turn Pardon? out to be better than, than the previous one, given that you'd signed a blank one? It could have been a worse contract that you'd been on. It could have been, but I think it was a case of like back then that it was about playing football, maybe not about earning so much money. Yeah. Not totally opposite today, but um no, he looked after us. Like um, so I signed the contract. He said, thank you for agreeing to, for working me, with me for the next four years. So straight away that triggers, oh, I'm going to get a four-year contract here. I go home that night, the phone rings, pick your contract up tomorrow, son, it's filled in. So he's actually filled it in, you right. know. So, and then I go back the next morning, I pick my contract up from the secretary. He knew I wanted a car. I'd been asking him for, a, for ages if I could get a car, but he used to say, no, you're not having a car, you're an idiot. He says, I can't trust you. I'll tell you when you can have a car. And it's like, it's mad. It's madness. Like, and I've like, been traveling on buses and trains and all that. And, you know, I'm 19 years old. I've passed my test. Well, come on, you know. Um, so it was almost like a father figure in that sense. In, you know, you'll yeah. learn to drive or you can drive when I say you can drive type thing. You can, you, you can go on the roads when I say you can. I look yeah. after you. You're my player. Yeah. Anyway. He put some car keys in the in the in the in the thingy, and uh, I'm led to believe that Elizabeth didn't like the car that she'd got, his daughter, and I ended up with Elizabeth's car. Um, but he even made me pay for that out my wages as well every <laughs> time. <laughs> so I've got some car keys in the envelope, and I've got a four year contract, and he's given me a four year contract, um, five hundred pounds a week. Uh, and then the 3% rise each year for the next four years. Um, a car, uh, 25 grand signing on fee. Um, and that's your four year deal. That's it. Until you hear any different. And that's when I knew that I was going to become his number one. Right. And the following season from then on, I was ever present um, under him for the next, next few years. Until unless, unless you take away when I was a bit of a naughty boy and he and he left me out of the cup final for so being a bit stupid when you know out on the town. And that is another story in itself from Mark Crossley. Next up is Brian Laws, the former Forest defender, who explained what happened when he told Brian Clough he was thinking about his own future plans. I started taking coaching badges, and I remember uh, going towards the end of my career. I had the hard to go and see Cluffy uh, because uh, I was doing, going to do my A license, which is a residential uh, course to be a coach, a qualified coach. And uh, I knocked on his door and he's, come on in, come in. So I sat down. He says, "What do you want?" I said, "Gaffer, I need uh, I need to ask you a question." I said, 
I want to take my coaching badges and uh, uh, have to go on a, a residential course. It'd be about a week. Uh, can I do it? He went, oh, my God. <laughs> and he just put his hands on and he said, next minute, he's shouting Archie Gemmell in. Archie, Archie. So Archie Gemmell comes into the dressing room. He comes into his room. He says, Archie, have you got a coaching badge? International. Scottish international, aren't you? And uh, Archie's gone. No, Gaffer, I ain't got a coaching badge. Laws, he wants to have a coaching badge. In <laughs> fact, he wants to tell you how to be a coach. What do you think of that? And Archie's just tutting away, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, here we go. <laughs> then he shouts Ron Fenton. Uh, uh, no, Ron, Ron Fenton. Um, Liam O'Kane. Liam, get in my room. Liam, Irish international, have you got a coaching badge? No, Gaffer. Laws, he wants to have a coaching badge and he wants to tell you how to coach. I haven't got one. He's going to tell me how to do my job. <laughs> what do you think of that? And I'm going, oh, this is just turning to mush. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so anyway, he said, get out of my office, you idiot. Anyway, so I've gone out. I've gone on a coaching course. My very first day getting back into the club, Cluffy's walking down the corridor. Lossy! Lossy! So I'm thinking, oh my God, he's going to cane me. <laughs> so he's coming to the dressing room. We're all sitting down and he's going, now, son, what do I call you now? Do I call you Brian or do I call you coach? <laughs> I've gone, just call me Brian if you want or anything else. Um, <laughs> and yes, yes, I am. I have qualified as a coach. He went, oh! That's wonderful. That's wonderful. You're going to tell me how to do my job. Lads, he's going to tell me how to do my job. <laughs> well, every touch I had of the ball or I made a mistake on a pitch, he'd shout on the touchline up and he'd coach, coach. <laughs> Is that what you're going to tell your players? Is that what you're going to show them? Idiot. Great stuff from Brian Laws. If you want to watch any of the interviews in full, I'll link them in the description below. They're, of course, available for you on the channel. Next up, Steve Hodge former Forest and England midfielder, who talks about when he told Brian Clough he wanted to leave. I was bored playing left wing and being restricted and being made to do jobs, which I could do and I did do and I had to do, but just didn't enjoy it. The first two years of midfield with, with Bomber, it was just like I had freedom. So I thought about it for a bit and I knew teams, you know, I'd, I'd been in the first team for three years, so I knew teams would be in for me. Um, so I asked for a transfer, I think it was about April of 85. And I thought about it for a while. And, you know, it was it was a massive decision because I was I was leaving the football club where I was a regular and picked every week and scored goals and was a, still a good young player. I think I was 23 by then, 22, 23. <clears throat> but I know I was, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine nowadays, but one man ran the football club. And one man knew everything about the football club and everything was geared towards what he knew, what he wanted. So I arranged a meeting with him. I know I God, you're brave. I, I could never do what you're about to do. I, I know. I often tell this story and people think, really? And I say, yeah, I was, I was, I think I was 22. And I had no agent. There's no agents in those days. I was on my own. Um, and it was... Not like today where the players like Chris Hewton, the players want somebody out, they'll make sure they get the manager out. They had all the power. He, obviously, Cloughy had all the power. So, you know, it, it was looking back now, it was it was brave. It was um, it was the right thing to do, I thought, at that time in my career, to move it forward. Um, but I look back now and think, God, you were taking a chance. And... I remember getting to his office about quarter to seven in the evening for a seven o'clock meeting. And I think the door went back. Oh, that was it. It was quarter to seven and he got there about quarter past eight. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> he made me sit. He made me sit on my own for about an hour and a quarter in the little foyer area outside of his office with his door shut. But he wasn't in then. And he, and he walked by me at quarter past eight and I'd been like sweating for an hour and a half by then thinking what was going to happen because he, he, he did have your career and, and he, I'd seen people get destroyed by him 
and, st- and put in the reserves for six months and their careers stunted or destroyed because he would he would hold a grudge. So he walked past me, went into his room, door still shut, and then door went back and he kind of that was it. It was open. He went so I like, come in. So I walked in and I sat down <clears throat> and it looked at me and he's, he obviously knew what was coming because he had eyes and ears everywhere. And looked at me and he went, son, son, did I say to you, young man, that you could walk into my office, young man, and sit on my chair? And I'm stood up and I'm thinking, what do I say? <laughs> and I said, no gaffer. And he went, good son, then piss off. <laughs> So I had to turn around and walk out again. And like go in the foyer area, like the little corridor towards his office. And then come back round and knock on the door. And he went, who is it? And he clearly knew it was. And I went, me gaffe. He went, son, come into my office, son. So I walked in, as you would do. And I just stood there. I wasn't taking the seat. I just stood there like a lemon thinking, right, what's going to happen now? And he went, son, have a seat in my office. So then I sat down in his, his beloved chair, if it was, next to where he was. <laughs> and he went, so what can I do for you, young man? And I went, well, blah, 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 gaffer. I've been here three years, left wing, blah, blah, blah. I'd like a transfer. And he went, oh, son, you want to transfer from my football club, young man? <laughs> son, I'll need it in writing, young man. And it was, it was in the pocket. I was all ready for him. I was prepared. So I got it out and just like gave it to him. And he opened it up and he read it with his bins on. And he just read it. And then I kind of got up thinking, I need to go now. So I kind of went walking out and he went, whoa, 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 whoa. Son, where are you going? I went, I'm getting off. And I went, oh, no, son, son, hang on a minute, son. Hang on, son, hang on. And he went, from now on, son, at my football club, whatever happens to you, son. And he stressed it. He went, whatever happens to you, son. Is because of this letter, son. Do you understand that, young man? And I went, yes, gaffer. And he went, good, son. Now piss off. And I walked out. I walked out really quickly, <laughs> as quick as I could. <laughs> I, remember, I remember walking by Paul Hart. He was there. For, I don't know why Paul was in next or whatever with his wife. And I nodded, nodded quickly. And then I got in my car. And I remember getting in my car. And I remember my hands, my hands were shaking. My hands were going like. I just put my hand on the kind of the steering wheel. My hands were shaking, <laughs> and you know, people laugh and think, "You know, you weren't that bad." But I'd, seriously, I had an hour and a half waiting for that to happen, and I knew what I was going to do. I spread transfer out of his football club, and he wasn't going to be very happy about it. And he made me suffer for an hour and a half, and then I had about ten minutes of being belittled completely, and then I walked out. And it was a Monday night that I won't forget, but it was the right thing to do. But I was on my own. I had no agent. You had to do it yourself, suck it, see what happened. Uh, but yeah, it, it wasn't pleasant. That cannot have been a fun conversation with Brian Clough for Steve Hodge. Next up, Martin Fisher, who I followed at BBC Radio Nottingham, now commentates on Match of the Day. He talks about the day he got a sit-down, one-on-one interview with Brian Clough. Not so I remember when we did retire, um, we were told we'd, we'd get an audience with him <clears throat> and we were very excited about that. We thought, oh, this is the time. Waited all this time to do an interview with him. So what, as you do, you kind of pen down what sort of questions you're going to ask him. And I thought, I've got to, you know, I've got to do the whole career at Forest. You know, this is the time. I've got all these points written down. You know, Trevor Francis, Championship, European Cup, the second coming, blah, 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 and retirement. And uh, <clears throat> what happened was that we went down. It was the night that Forest playing Notts County in the County Cup final. Uh, we went down to do him. Me from Radio Nottingham and uh, Darren Fletcher was at, um, I think it was Gem then, so the independent radio station. We're both very excited. Excited and nervous as to what would come, but, but primed for this interview of all interviews with the man. We probably got... Well, we got into his office... And we sat down on his settee and his secretary came in and said, he's not got long. We thought, oh, well, that's, that's not a good start. <laughs> and then when he came in, he, he, got, he got a flat cap on. He used to wear a flat cap in those days. And he walked in, he looked at us both and he said, right, I've not got long. And then as we sort of 
waited for us to be given the nod to then go and talk to him. He took off his cap and he took aim. And we were both looking at each other. We were like naughty schoolboys looking at, looking at each other, looking at him, thinking, what, what's, what's he doing? What's he doing? So he'd taken off his cap and he chucked it across his office, which was quite large. And there was a hat stand on the far side. And he was trying to get his cap to hit the, the, the coat stand like James Bond did. And of course he missed. And his secretary who was there as well, ran across to pick up the cap and bring it back. And he had another go and he missed again. And me and Darren are looking at our watches thinking, well, if we've not got long, <laughs> we're not going to start until he hits that thing. We ain't going to get very long at all. So he, he missed. Carol went across, picked it up again. And we thought, for God's sake, Carol, if he misses again, just leave it there. We've got <laughs> uh, so he did. And then he came across. He said, who's first? And I think I went, I, I did go first. Um, so I started. And of course, I've got this long list. Never, the other thing with Cluffy is never, ever have a list of questions because I've been told before that what he'd done before to people when they did that was you just lean over, grab it and chuck it. So yeah. you kind of got your, your sort of notebook, but you'd put it away so he didn't know. So you then you start your questions. So <clears throat> I kicked off mine with whatever nice little half folly to get him started. And he went off on a tangent and then he came back and he went off on another tangent. And then I'd, I'd literally asked two or three questions. And then he said, son, you've had your turn bugger off and then he went to Darren and Darren got about three minutes as well and it was like I waited all this time to do the yeah. interview with Brian Clough and you get you get about 60 80 seconds with him lovely story from Martin Fisher if you want to watch more Clough stories they're available for you right here or for example the Brian Laws interview that's here <laughs>